izlosiet sveicināt. Tas esam sagaidījuši jau ceturtu epizodi, un šodien man būs ļoti jaudīgs viesis vārdi tiešāk jānozīmē. Tas ir Gilberts Aibels. Ja nezinu šo vīru, tad iesaka jums pastīties YouTube vai Google, vai jau kādā citā veidā iepazīties ar viņa cīņām. Viņš ir cīnies cīņu sporta zelta tērā, kā viens laikos Pride viņš ir cīnies Showtime Affliction UFC pilnībā visās lielajās organizācijās cīnies ar milzīgiem vārdiem kā Vanderlei Silva, Dens Hendersons, Vitors Belforts, Igors Lubčančins un ļoti daudz citi milzīgi pieredze ar šim vīram. Jā, viņš bija ordinālais sliktais puika cīņas sportā Nīderlandes MMA ikona tajā laikā. Viennozīmīgi viņš bija pirmais numurs, tas, kurš Nīderlandes vārdu nesa. Un viņš ir bēdīgs labens ar... Visādiem notikumiem, manprāt, varēja būt slavenākais cīkstons, kuram ir tik daudz incidenti bijuši, ir mēģinājis acis izspiest Donam Frajam. Ja neatceries, kas ir Dons Frajs, tad tas ir amerikāņu cīkstons ar ūsiņām, un vienmēr amerikāņu šortos bija lielākā daļa, viņa tā atpazīst vizuāli vienkārši. Um, bet laikam populārākais incidents ir bijis, kur viņš nakautē tiesnesi cīņas laikā. Uh, mēs arī par to nedaudz parunāsim. Uh, gan jau arī linku ieliksim, vai pašu atradīsiet, kur to var nostīties incidentu, viņš tas viss ir brīvi pieejams, ļoti viegli atrodams. Tā kā, jā, es ceru, ka jums patiks sarna ar Gilbertu, un viņš pats labprāt teica, ka parunāt vēlreiz iziet cauri visam viņa cīņa rekordam, viņa labākajiem nakautiem, un, bet mums tomēr ir nedaudz arī jāpieskarās pirms šī visa par aizgājušo UFC, Amanda Lemos pret Marinu Rodriguez. Viss turnīrs beidzās, viss cīņas beidzās priekšlēcīgi, visas piecas. Ja es arī laikam dāma duels, jo, kā es arī pirms tam minēju, no 15 pēdējām vakar galvenajām cīņām, kur piedalās dāmas, tikai viena pirms tam bija beigusies priekšlēcīgi, un arī tajā piedalījās Amanda Lemos, viņa gan zaudēja Jessica Andrāžai ar um, ar, arm triangle stābotu kājās, kas pirmo reizi tikai UFC izdarīts. Nu, tagad otro reizi beidzās vakar galvenā cīņa priekšlēcīgi, un atkal Amanda Lemos ir viena no vainniecēm, un viņa piebeidza savu pretnieci ar tehnisko nakautu. Un vēl var izcelt pašu vakaru pirmo cīņu, kā man parasti parīgi teikt, ka UFC matchmaker ļoti piedomā pie tā, kas ir vakar galvenā pirmā atvēršanas cīņa, kas iesildīs vakar, uzstādīs toni visam cīņu vakaram. Un tur bija Marks Madsens pret Grant Dawson, divi grappleri, un Madsens, protams, olimpiskā sudra medaļa grieķa romēša cīņā. Nu, Dawsons pierādīja, ka ir labāks esmu zemē mā grapplingā, bet Mans nam tomēr jau tū daļu būs 40 gadi, tā kā var saprast, bet Dawsons svinēja uzvar šajā cīņā ar Rear Naked Choke, izņaudz viņš Madsenu. Tagir Sulam Bekovs pret Neitu Manes vēl cīnījās šajā vakarā. Tagir Sulam Bekovs, kā, kā jau zinām, ir Habiba komandas biedrs audzēknis drīzāk, pat tā varētu teikt. Arī viņš diezgan viegli tik galā ar savu pretinieku, ar gilotīnu viņa izņaudzi. Nu, tā mums bija arī Nils Magnīs pret Daniela Rodrīgas, kā par Magnī jau sāk runāt, ka viņš ir tāds kā vārtu turētājs visiem, kas grib ielausties divīzijas elitē. Nu, tad Daniela Rodrīgas neizdevās ielausties, tajā Nils Magnīs pierādīja, ka viņš nav nekāds vārtu turētājs, ka viņš vēl joprojām ir tepat, un cerības varbūt par titulu nav nemaz tik izgaisuši, jo Nils Magnīs ir labs visur, gan stājā, gan partarī viņš ir kompetents, tā kā skatīsimies, kas būs viņam tālāk, bet tagad es jums ļaušu izbaudīt sarunu ar Gilbert Aivo. So, what's up, guys? I have an OG of the fight game today, Mr. Gilbert Aivo. How are you, man? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. You know, I always say that there are, you know, there are sportsmen and there are fighters, you know. By sportsmen, I mean, for example, um, like Georges St. Pierre, right? We all know he's a good fighter, but he's more of a, how should I put this, an athlete or, you know, he's playing it, not safe, but smart, like, but you know, there are some guys that are fighters, you know, and, and I think you're one of them. You, you think it's fair to say? Yes. Actually, nowadays, all the, all the so-called fighters are more sportsmen. Exactly. Um, um, they like playing the, 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 they're playing the, the, the sport of, uh, of fighting. Fighting of sports, sports of fighting, I think. Yeah. <laughs> nowadays, yeah, I know what you mean. They don't try to knock nobody out. They just try to uh, win the fights on get on points and uh, um, taking care better of themselves. You know, um, you know, uh, looking at uh, 
looking at the fighters they really want to fight and the fights they don't want to do just become higher up in the in their rankings and back in the days we just fought doesn't matter who you are you know if you want to be champion you have to fight everybody so yeah i thought i think you fought in the uh, golden age of combat sports i think we back in the day remember we had k1 i loved k1 man that was the best best thing ever you know one week peter arts knocks out jerome lebanner next week he knocks out him you know those th that was the golden era of it pride was uh in business uh, ufc was coming up i think you fought actually in the yeah in the golden age maybe the social media wasn't as popular as now you know maybe i think if you've fought, fought nowadays with your style i think you'd be you know a bigger superstar even Yes, I think so. But, you know, another 20 years, uh, people will say the same thing about now. But yeah, um, when I started fighting, uh, there was there was no, and there was internet, but there was no way to find somebody on online. So when we, uh, you know, I live in Holland and when I was fighting in Japan, they br uh, we brought back uh, DVD, uh, not DVDs, uh, videotapes. VHS, you know? yeah, 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 and then you could uh, could choose who you would uh, would like to uh, see the the tape to. But nowadays, everybody can see everything, and everybody knows everything uh, on uh, on social media and on the internet. Yeah, there was so, no Instagram back in the day, you know, Twitter no and Instagram, all this stuff. No Facebook, no Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, a hotmail. The only thing we had, <laughs> a messenger. Yeah, exactly. That was that. That was it, basically. I know yeah. a lot of people. You know, as I mentioned before, before we were on air, uh, a lot of people, especially younger people, started watching MMA because of McGregor, and you know, they don't know like the golden era of 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 our sport, but. I'll I'll let them know in a few words that you you were one of the most aggressive fighters I think back in the day you were the main guy for Holland and MMA basically right I don't think there was any yeah, you much. Bob Schreiber and yeah, some pretty much, for, pretty much for Europe I for think. Europe yeah yeah so yeah. my question is was Gilbert Ivo always like this were you fighting a lot growing up as a kid you know because your fighting style you were super aggressive you you had this kill or be killed attitude you know that's why i loved watching you fight man um well what can i say uh when i was young i i was uh, like one of the few black kids in the the the, the place i uh, used to live in holland and uh pretty much a lot of people were picking on me so i had to fight and the moment when i got into the fighting game yeah, my uh, my cousin told me right before my first fight, he said, you have to look at Mike Tyson. He hits <laughs> people right before they want to hit him. And I was like, well, I can do that. So the moment I just got into the into the ring or case, I just, you know, just Click. jump the opponent. I just go just and... turn the switch on, right? Yes, I just beat him up, yeah. <laughs> You know, I think one of your we can go. I, I think we can go through some of your fights, the bigger name fights. For me, I think the most favorite fight of yours or most impressive one is you knocking out Semi Shield. People that yeah. don't know, Semi Shield is a four-time K1 Grand Prix winner, former Glory champion as well. He's a kickboxing Hall of Famer, like two meters something long, right? Yeah, two meters thirteen. Yeah. And you knocked him the f out. You're one of the three people actually to knock him out. Did you know that? Um, I was the first, I think, right? Yeah, you were first the first, movie. but in his whole career, I think Badr Hari yeah. and Alexei Ignacio were the other two. So you were yeah. one of the yeah. three people to knock the skyscraper out. But th yes. that was a different time, right? You were rings, he was pancreas, right? Can you talk yeah. about that time a little bit? Uh, actually, I know, uh, 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 I know I'm training with the, the trainer of Badr, Mike, and he's like, yeah, mm. um, wait, I knocked uh, Sam out was the the blueprint for for them to knock Sammy out too. But yeah, um, I was, at that time, I was the Rings, uh, Rings uh, 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 world champion. And he was the, he was the Pancreation champion. And they're both uh, big organi organizations in Japan. Both big organizations in Japan. And 
we bought from Holland, we bought champions, and then they thought, you know what, let's fight, let them fight together. Yeah, and the weird I, thing about it was you had gloves and he didn't, right? Yeah. So uh, pancreation was back in the days, bare, uh, bare, uh, bare palms. hands, uh, uh, palms, but rings also, but rings just adapted the new style so you could use little gloves. So, and we could choose if you want to use gloves or open hands. Yeah. Shem, Shem, he was always, uh, he always fought with open hands. And, you know, I thought it's a little bit smarter to use my gloves. So, yeah, I used the gloves and uh, it was the... The right I think, choice that was. I, I really watched the fight. I, I I remember I watched it a long time ago. I rewatched it, you know, two days ago, I think. And I was thinking to myself, why the hell did he didn't choose gloves? You know, I think it's a lot easier to... I, I mean, you can close a fist and punch him in the face. You know, he can only open palm strike. So that was a bit weird for me, but knockout is a knockout, man. Yes, for sure. <laughs> nothing feels as good as knocking another person out. Do you agree? Yeah, well, actually, nothing feels as good as me and somebody in the head. <laughs> oh, yeah. You you definitely yeah. liked your knees. I think there isn't a fight where you didn't open up or end the combination with a knee, knee strike. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I remember... Uh, Wanderlei Silva fight as well. That's the second one I wanted to. Because on, looking on paper, Gilbert Ivo against Wanderlei Silva, <laughs> fireworks <laughs> guarantee, right? But the fight ended too quick. I think 20 seconds or something. He kicked you in the balls. Yeah. And yeah. that was probably the most painful groin kick I've seen. How, how bad was it? Yeah. The thing was, I'm still say it was on purpose because I gave him my I gave him a I gave him a really good low kick, and the first thing he did he looked at this corner and then he looked and he kicked me straight in the nuts. So yeah, that hurts. Actually, Plus, it hurts. he didn't he didn't look sad that the fight didn't continue as well. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. and the bad thing for me is that like I was uh, I'm like they asked me, do you want to have some disqualification uh, or no contest? And I was like. Dude, I don't want to win like this. Stupidest thing ever, but that's the way I was. But I should have said disqualification, then I could get my 30% more money and I got a win on my... But yeah, it's too bad. I said, yeah, uh, no contest. Yeah, he was... He, uh, of course, I cannot look in his heart, but it's. I think he was happy he couldn't uh, that he did not have to finish the fight with me. It looked like it. Plus, you were bigger as well. And... You, he knew he you won't take him down. You 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 were a pure striker, you know. All all the guys took you down. Let's be honest; they didn't yeah, want yeah, to stand yeah. with you in your career. Everyone took you down. Even even strikers took you down. Yeah. So that was that was yeah. yeah did you uh, train yeah, with him afterwards with Wanderlei? Yeah, I did. I uh, I lived for uh, like four years in uh, Vegas, and uh, uh, I trained with him a couple times. It was fun. Um. Uh, yeah, it was fun and hard. So yeah, we uh, we 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 hit it off really good. How did those sparring sessions go? Because I know he likes to go hundred percent as well. Hey, I remember in the beginning that uh, my trainers were there. We was like we do fifty seventy five percent. But one day my trainers weren't there, and it was just me. And hey, he went hundred. So <laughs> I and I I have to, I had to give him one. I had to I I. I uh, I didn't knock him out, but I uh, make him. Uh, I give him wobbly legs, and then it was over. <laughs> I wouldn't expect nothing less actually from him, and from you too as well. Basically, I think I think you went to the what? What year was it that you went to the UFC? Well, I don't know. It was at the like the end end of your career, basically, right? Yeah, I think after UFC, I had like four more fights. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I think I mean, if you if you. Basically, Sorry. right before I went to fight in the UC, I was basically my mind was already done with fighting. I was like, yeah. But then I get an opportunity to fight in the UC. Well, of course, it's a dream of everybody. And I took it and I actually wasn't ready, but it's okay. Uh, I fought three times, lost. And then um, after that, I fought two fights in the RFA. And then I fought twice. Once in Czech, Chechnya, and mm -hmm. once in China in the Road to FC, and there was a tournament. I fought Mighty Mo, and I won that fight. And then I we have supposed to fight uh, uh, like the quarterfinals, 
of the, of the half of the, you know, just one or two more fights and then I would have won the tournament, but they canceled the show. It's too bad. Yeah, definitely. I think if you went to the UFC, especially the heavyweight division back in the day, wasn't that stacked, you know, I think you could have made a run for the title probably. Because as you said, you you weren't ready or it wasn't the right time in your career. And I believe so because back then, you know, Dos Santos was coming up, Cain Velasquez, it was the time of the heavyweight division. But in your well, prime time, I should have fought there like 10 years earlier mm. when I was like uh, 21, 22, because I was in uh, I was in uh, somewhere and I'm not sure. I think Louisiana, there was a UFC. I'm pretty sure it was in Louisiana. And then uh, I was watching over there and uh, then, I, then I talked to my manager. Then but my manager didn't want to do the thing. Too bad because it, I was... I was still young, and that time, well, Chuck Liddell was champion then, and Tito Ortiz, and we know I would beat them up standing, so. Yeah, Chuck would stand with you, and that probably wouldn't end good for him. You're a bigger guy than him as well, you know, Tito Ortiz, who knows, who knows about Tito, but, uh, yeah, yeah he would, I mean. He would probably try to take me down, but then uh, as I was also training a lot in, in, uh, in the States on the ground and I, I you know I would get more better but my trainer over here at that time was like no we only train standing and no too I bad. mean it's no surprise you're from Holland you guys love stand-up fighting striking kickboxing Definitely. that's why the semi shield fight was with uh how much how long can you stay on the ground it was what 20 seconds or something no no it was uh I'm pretty sure it was like well, if there was no action, they had to stand us up. So, um, but before that, I, I think it was like 20 seconds on the ground and then I have to stand up. But I, I, I was training in uh, Vegas with John Lewis and he was teaching me the ground and I was getting better. But, you know, I actually too bad that I didn't have a chance to stay there from that time on because then I would be UFC champion for sure. Yeah, I mean that was your. Let's be honest, that was your. You know, that was your only your only weakness, the ground game, basically. That's where yeah. everyone took you down. Even Igor Wovchenchen, he was he was one of my favorites back in the day as well, and he was known as a striker. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't waste no time he taking you down as well, man. He didn't want to take you. Know? <laughs> he didn't. He didn't want any part of it. No. We talked about the old K one days and all these K one dudes like Peter Arts, Remy Bonyaski. So even semi shield. Did you train back in the day with them in Holland or not? Um, uh, actually, no. I used to be friends with Remy, really close. And then he won the K1 once, and then uh, he, like, he turned it turned into a dick. He couldn't say anything to me <laughs> anymore. Just pussy. And then he, uh, then he, uh, I went to, I, I, lo uh, I left my, uh, I switched gyms. And then Raimi came out also to the gym and uh, the trainer <laughs> didn't train for three months, but after three months, he let them, us train with them. And I'm like, I think for like one or two years straight, I beat him up every training session. <laughs> so wait, he won the Grand Prix and his head got big? He just yeah, he, thought he's he, better than everyone? Yeah, he, and we were close. You know, he like uh, stayed the night with me. You know, we went out and do parties and everything. But yeah, but fuck it. He, he went, he came to the gym and we, I beat him up like every sparring session. Trust I me. Can imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a bitch move from him, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, not yeah. what boys do with boys, right? Well, but it's the way he is, you know, for him. <laughs> Listen, man, I know that people will give me slack if I don't ask you. I know you probably don't. You know what, probably where I'm going with this, uh, with one, <laughs> with one incident in your career. I know you've answered this in a different video. I've, I've seen it. I know, but people I know will give me slack if we don't touch it a little bit. Mm. One of your most controversial things is, uh, knocking a referee out and in your defense a lot of us have wanted to do it you're just a, a, a one guy that did it and a lot of us fuck up you know but you're the one that did it in millions yeah. of in millions of eyes basically can you walk us through why why it happened the referee incident yeah like, actually it's stupidest thing everybody wants to punch a referee and actually i did it exactly it's stupid um well uh i was in uh I went to Finland, I think, 
yeah, Finland. And uh, I was there on a tournament and this guy uh, came to me and he said, Gilbert, you know what? Uh, I have to show and I'm trying to get big. Uh, but it would be awesome if I can somebody uh, with the name like you fight on my show. But I don't have a lot of money. Like, well, it's okay, you know, don't give me the best opponent and we'll be okay, right? And, well, don't, you don't have to treat me like a god, but, you know, respect me a little, you know, but normally I could pay like four, five times as much of the amount he wanted to pay me. So and I was doing him a favor. Well, so we uh, arrived at 10 or 11 in the morning at uh, Finland airport. And after like five minutes, he came, he left. He's like, well, I'll be right back. And he came back after two hours, like, really. And I had to make weight, so I didn't, I, I didn't eat. So, so long, story, uh, long story short, he uh, drove us in the car to here and over there and over there to a weighing to this and that. And the only place we could eat was in the hotel. And we came in the hotel at 10 in the evening. So I arrived at 11 in the... 11 in the morning at the airport and at 10 in the evening he dropped us in the in the hotel yeah, all right that's a big move then it turns out he was the organization uh, i know he, i was he was the organizer but he was the trainer of the other guy and he was the referee of the fight <laughs> uh, uh, the fight starts uh, we clash uh, I, I hit him already hard he messed up his nose and he uh, um, uh, he was already in pain. Then we almost we come in the position that we almost fall out of the out of the ring. And then the ref said, "Stop, break like it's normal, like eh, go back in the middle and start again." But his 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 fight is like, "No, I don't want this. Uh, I had a good position." And then the ref say, "No, back to the position. I had to bend over the ropes again." With his guy's hand on my throat. He wanted you to go in the ropes. Yes. Like in lean the in the ropes. Who does yeah. that? Yeah, leaning the... <laughs> in the ropes with his guy's head, hand on my on my on my on my throat. I'm like like that. I'm like, well, that's not a rule. You know, when we tangled in the in the in the in the ropes, he say break, go it back in the middle. Now, if you're on the ground, same position. But yeah. in the, you know, but if you're on we're on the ground, but we are standing. He's like, same position. I'm like, well, no. But then my trainer said, Gil, just do it. You beat him up anyway. So then I have to bend over <laughs> like this. The guy put his hand on my throat and he said, fight. And I, I was out. And he's like, no, it's too quick. I said, again, same position. And the guy was screaming and pulling on me and screaming and pulling and yelling. And I'm like, well, you know what? I got mad. I, I'm like... <laughs> I'm like shit, and then I, this voice say, "I gonna punch him," and I was like, "No, no, 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 no. yeah, I gonna punch him." I'm like, no, no, do do, no, 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 yep, and then bah, I hit him, and then I give him a little, just you know, a little, a little control shot. Yeah, just another kick, just to make sure. So yeah. basically, had a little devil and a little angel on yeah. your. Uh, shoulders one is telling you do it the other one is gilbert yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah i'm still i you know the thing is funny it's stupid but it was funny it uh, is i mean you can look back at it now and laugh yeah, about it right it and it's really really i was like no 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 don't, 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 like, what you doing like shit yeah yeah was, and then was this friend, the incident why it was difficult to get uh, licensed in nevada and yeah Vegas? It's, yeah it's yes right yeah. it's exactly and the thing is um I had to talk to the state athletic commission. Mm. And uh, I was on the phone. I was already 30 minutes on the phone because you were dealing with somebody else. I think Frank Shamrock or somebody else. They can suspend it. And I'm hearing them because I'm sitting on the phone and they're like, well, the next is go with Eiffel. And I already hear people say, yo, no, I'm not going to give him. More. So I can hear them talk. I'm like, well, why am I on the phone? <laughs> so yeah, they uh, give me a hard time. But the only thing they wanted is like a really American, like, oh, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I did that. And I'm so Yeah, yeah. They wanted you to do the whole public apology thing. I'm so yeah. sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It won't yeah. happen again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, they give me a one year suspension of I couldn't fight in the States. 
and then after that i was allowed to, uh, to fight in the in la the state commission from la so, so mm. yes, right? yeah then you let me in uh i i went there apologized it was all good so then then they all understand they all they all saw the video they all they know. They understand. They, know. they got they the whole know. story. Like, well, that's, that's not right to punch the referee, but they all, they all, yeah, they would, yeah. They, yeah, at <laughs> least people know the full story, you know, because from looking from the side, it's it's not always what it seems. That's why I like Japan, man. They didn't care about anything. They just, they just, they they let guys use, you know, Mexican supplements, horse meat, whatever. Yeah, you just yeah, yeah. go go for it. Give you bags of money. Uh, I was, um, you know, I had, I had, I had my bad times, you know, uh, fighting Don Fry and uh, eye poking and stuff. And being yeah, I didn't mention that on purpose. But well, if you if was, you mention I, it, we can talk about well, it. I was, I was a dick. I was being, I was doing stupid stuff. You know, who cares? I was young, stupid. But um, at that point, uh, Japan, the people from Japan were like, you know what, kill it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Just do your Keep thing. Keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, do your thing, and uh, we don't even gonna charge you money. But normally, when you get a yellow card, they will take uh, take uh, like ten percent, ten percent of your purse. Another yellow card, another ten, and they like, yo, yo, you do your thing, you know, kiss an elbow or do a little. They really that they, they told me <laughs> to do that, but i i did it in like in a stupid moment so it was not really me but uh after that um what's his name the big uh, black dude um Goodridge? no 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 the really really big one um, you, you, you fought him no 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 uh, the, the, bob the, the sap you mean bob sap yeah, bob sap yeah he got he 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 played that part Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, he played a part, and he got like he got like millionaire because they. Oh yeah. They, he yeah he did the, he got the all he played the bad boy part, and um, you know, actually he was like he lived in Japan. He get to all the shows and. Oh yeah, he was on TV. He was a huge celebrity in Japan. Yeah, so yeah. it could be me, but you know. Universe has other plans for me. <laughs> I mean, you they like that bad boy image. Even you did all that stuff. They they liked it. People liked it as well. But but Bob Sapp, if we talk about he won against Ernesto Hoos two times, I think, right? Two? I'm not sure. I think for sure one time. Yeah, one it was definitely. Was I think it was even two. So he he had some bright moments as well. Well, I think uh nobody knew how to fight him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was the first one to fight him and yeah, styles and, make fights, right? Yeah, and he, uh, I think, and some made some mistakes because, uh, because, uh, yeah, he didn't know nothing about him. But now, if you fight Bob Sapp, yeah, you have you step him on his liver just once and it's over. And but yeah, so you like striking so much. Uh, why didn't you fight more in you know kickboxing and stand up fights? Have you did you thought about it or not? Um. Uh, no, actually, it was always uh, MMA. I actually did, did three uh, kickboxing fights. But, uh, I know, four. Yeah, but uh, it was always MMA. And uh, I like MMA a little bit. It suited better. your style more better. You know, yeah. it was less ruling a little bit. Yeah, no big gloves to cover up. Yeah. And and actually, uh, kickboxing is hard, man. That is oh, pretty yeah. hard. It's like it's like uh, it is an, an uh, all round battle. It's like heart on heart, punching, knees, kicking, and sometimes in the MMA you can just lay on top of somebody, rest a little bit, or hold them a little, and then get a breather, right? Yeah, but yeah. That's like... what I always say about kickboxing. And boxing, you know, you can't lay down, you can't take a break. Even the ref is like, push, even if you clinch, he's pushing you off. You know, let's 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 fight again. Yeah, I agree yeah. completely with you. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, boxing is a little different because you know you only have to worry about two hands. But yeah, yeah. true. I love boxing though. I do a lot of boxing lately, and I yeah, I like it. Yeah, I love boxing. So, what do you do now? You you teach? You're a trainer I teach, now. Yeah. I, yeah. Teach, uh, I teach. I uh, teach MMA uh, uh, to kids and adults. I do kickboxing to kids and adults. 
and uh, uh, I do a lot of, I teach back training and I'm a personal trainer. So I do a lot of uh, fitness. And Everything in Amsterdam. What are the club names? Because I know there's quite a few Latvians in, in Netherlands as well in Amsterdam. Well, actually, I teach at uh, Mike's gym, you know, from Mike. Of course, legendary Mike. Mike. Yes, I teach in uh, Hilversum, that is outside of Amsterdam, that is uh, Burning Heart. Um, and then I teach in another place in Amsterdam, it goes, they call, the name is the Eastbound Gym, that I teach. I actually I only teach kids over there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's funny, you know, like, you know, this ruthless guy, how, how, do, you, how, do, you, how, <laughs> how do you teach the kids, like... Uh, actually, I'm in, uh, in, in Oost, in Amsterdam East. I'm like actually one of the two teachers who, who is able to teach the kids because the other teachers, uh, other trainers, they just can handle the kids. So, um, well, the difference between uh, adults and kids, adults don't want to spar with me and the kids, they just love to fight me. They don't really care about my sights or... As a fighter, you know me as this big trainer, and we have always a lot of fun. And I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm I've always fun with kids. I love kids. Kids are, are uh, amazing. If you teach them right, they will grow. And you know, and the thing is, well, I'm not their parent, so I can be tough to them for one hour or have fun with them for one hour, and after that, they have to go <laughs> with somebody else. So yeah, kids are. Yeah, I love to do the kids. I when I teach, uh, I think we have every Friday at least twenty kids, twenty oh, wow. to thirty kids running around. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's the thing. I, yeah, sorry, continue. No, no, and I have more. I'm I have more control. <laughs> like, shut up, man! <laughs> no, I'm not screaming. <laughs> I'm like, I, just, I mean, I'm, you have to sometimes. I'm not a no. Sir. I just be quiet. I'd be like. I'll be like this, or I count out loud, I'm like, oh, one, <laughs> Yeah, but that's, that's the thing about you, you know, for, like looking from your fights and everything, you might think that, you know, you're this uh, aggressive, ruthless guy, but in reality, in real life, you're, you know, you're a calm, really nice guy, you know, people yeah. maybe don't even expect this from you when they meet you. Yeah, most of the people are like, where? Is it, what? Is it him? She always like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because people probably think you're the same in real life, you know, punching someone in the face, flying knee someone in the face. Yeah, that's yeah. People, that's what people think. I like just beat somebody up just because they look at, look wrong at me. Like no, but I know how to fight. But I'm not. I'm not fighting. You know, I know. How, you know, I'm just go with. I'm of course trying to be. I'm trying to be a good guy, yeah. a good parent, a good teacher, and um share my knowledge to the world and and uh well that i look that i can break somebody into okay this is a bonus <laughs> it's not like it's not that it's not what i do all all day every day that's good i mean but you know we have to talk about next week's ufc a little bit because mainly this this thing is about ufc but we had to talk we had to talk about some of your past stuff as well obviously i think we have to start we have to touch the main event of this week. It's uh, Adesanya against Pereira. Two kickboxers, two former glory fighters. Uh, Pereira, obviously, two-way champion. He's, in my opinion, if not the best, one of the, you know, I don't know, one of the best. So what's your take on this this duo between those two guys? Yeah, of course. Uh, Pereira won two of the kickboxing fights against um, uh, Israel. But to be honest, the first win on points was a little discutable. Dis dis Agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one, uh, uh, Ishii put uh, Alex on uh, on ice, ice, ca ice skates, but then he uh, recovered from that and knocked uh, uh, Israel out. But that was Israel's last fight in kickboxing. But Alex mm -hmm. went and became eight times glory champion and like knocking everybody out on his way. So he became a much better standing fighter, much better. Well, Israel was fighting MMA fighters who weren't his league, in his league of stand-up fighting. 
So um, if Israel is smart, he's fighting uh, uh, Alex like it is an MMA fight. You know, jab, in and out, maybe try to take it to the ground and do whatever he can. But don't try to kickbox with Alex Perez because Alex is a much better fighter than he was then. And he is just, he got the knockout power. He, just he got that left power. hook, man. That left hook is deadly. Yeah. Deadly. And, and we see from the last fight uh, when um, Israel was fighting uh, uh, Whitaker and also Karine, 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 Karine. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he got hit with the left hook one or, tw one or twice. And now. Pereira was probably licking his lips watching that. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, um, if uh, Israel is smart, he's going to he's gonna be in. He will make it a boring fight for us so he can win. He's but, been getting a lot of shit lately because of, you know, boring yeah, fights. Yeah, but, but now it is difficult because I think he wants to prove that he is the better kickboxer. And if he does mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. then he gives uh, uh, Alex Perez all the chance he uh, needs in the world. And then I predict a uh, second or third round KO for Alex Perez. I mean, look at Strickland, right? He wanted a kickboxing match. He wanted to prove wow. something. It was so stupid, right? I was thinking it's easy for Strickland. Just take him down. Just take him yeah. down. Yeah. But he wanted to prove something. And... That's what I'm saying. This is what I told everybody also. If he's smart, take him down. Don't be stupid. Mm -hmm. Why are you gonna but he he was stupid. Yeah, he could knock he could knock the fuck down. Yeah. So I mean that's Strickland. Well <laughs> he's a yeah. crazy guy. Yeah. Adesanya is a smart fighter. He has a good fight IQ. I think I think you're right, spot on about everything you just said. Do you have a favorite fighter to watch in the UFC? You have but, some favorites? Uh, uh well, I, I like uh Valentina Chevchenko. Okay, I yeah. like actually I like uh, Shang Wei Li. Uh, she's a she's a badass. And for of course now um, Alex Perez, I like to see what's happening. I like um, uh, Charles Oliveira. And uh, I think he was just unlucky with his fight against uh, 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 Makachev. Makachev, yeah, yeah. Um, for a uh, young uh, Peter Jam. Yeah, he got also he got robbed. I think he he's the full robbed. package, right? Yeah, he's just he been robbed. unlucky lately. Yeah, uh, Volkanovski, I like Volkanovski too because there are people they work really hard and and, and they're like uh, they work hard and they uh, actually uh, I think Volkanovski doesn't have all the talent, but he's a guy who worked really hard and he's a grinder, and then he he finishes it. Yeah, so yeah, I love those guys. Yeah. Yeah, him and Makachev are next supposed to be at least. Well, I hear now the uh, the winner of uh, Chandler against uh, Poirier probably gonna is, is fighting Makachev. So, what do it's you better. think about this fight, Chandler Poirier? That's a banger as well. Yeah, and also the same thing. If uh, is Poirier is smart, you just make it the boxing match, but not a slugfest. So you know, in and out, and then uh, pick uh, Chandler apart. And if Chandler is smart, he makes it the slugfest. So mm -hmm. there is his chance, you know, or maybe try to get the addition on the ground. Um, so yeah, who's the smart smart fighter? We want we want to see a bang. Two guys banging uh, banging it out, but I think. Yeah, if they play it smart, they you know they're equally dangerous to each other. You know, the one who plays it smart, he wins. I'm I'm leaning a little bit more to uh, Dustin. Same. You know, yeah. yeah, Chandler's explosive. He has the right hand and everything. But I think Poirier is overall a better fighter, and if he plays it smart, he he should take it probably. Yeah. Listen, is there a matchup that you you regret that you never had? You know, back 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 in the day, in the pride or something. Was there some fighter that you really wanted to get your hands on but didn't get the opportunity? Like Fedor or someone? No? No, not really. Actually, if I think back, I would like to fight all the people I, I lost to then. Because nine of the nine out of ten fights I lost was just because not because they beat me, because I let them beat me. Mm. 
I mean, you're the kick, you're the kickboxer from Holland. There's not a hard, not, not hard to game plan against you, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> just do a double power double and take you down, and just lay on you. So yeah, what's what's next for Gilbert Ibel? What what's what's in your plans? Uh, nothing much. I'm working. Uh, besides, I'm doing a per, uh, personal training and teaching. I'm doing. I'm analyst for Bellator, and actually this Saturday I'm being analyst at the UFC fights for the Dutch TV for the Discovery. Nice. And um, that's basically uh, uh, that's it. Nothing. Uh, nothing exciting. Uh, no uh, uh, fighting plans. Or whatsoever, just you know, try to live my life. Be don't good. you get the itch? Not don't. <laughs> well, if the if the money is right, you know, KSW the other day they, they sent me a text, but you know, I like well. I mean, if yeah. the if the opponent is you know same same category as well, you know, two veterans fighting. Well, why actually, not? why not? Money. When the money is right, because yeah. I'm old now, and if I like break a finger or a hand, I cannot teach. I cannot, you know. And I'm like, oh, if I break something, I have to. Uh, it will take in like six months to to recover. Back in the days, it was a week. You know, I was good. Now, <laughs> now if I cough, I'm like sick for a month. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about this off air. Maybe, maybe we can figure something out sometime. You never know. You never know. You never know, Gilbert. Listen, it was awesome talking to you. I see we're running out of time, and who knows? Maybe we'll talk another time, go through your fights or something. Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, I would like this. Nu ko, tā bija mana saruna ar Gilbertu Aibel, sarki jums tā patika. Es domāju, ka lielākā divi pārliecinājās, ka lai arī Gilberts viņa cīņa stils un vispārējais par viņu var liecināt, ka viņš ir ļoti agresīvs un brutāls vīrs, lai arī būri un ringā viņš tāds, protams, ir, bet... Manuprāt, jūs arī pārliecināties, ka dzīvē pavisam noteikti tā nav. Viņš ir kā tāds milzīgs plīšu lācīts, un pavisam dzīvē nav tāds, kā pieredz viņa bija redzēt cīņās. Arī Gilberts pats saka, labprāt, vēlreiz kādreiz sazdanītos, parunātos gan par UFC, gan par aizdītajām viņa cīņām, ko mēs arī ļoti iespējams arī darīsim. Pieskārāmies arī nākamās nedēļas pay-per-view turnīram, kas būs monstruāls patiesībā. Protams, vakar galvenā cīņa izraels Adesanya pret Alex Pereiru. Ar Gilbertu nedaudz parunājām par šīs cīņas iznākumu, kā, kā kuram vajadzētu cīnīties. Un, manuprāt, ļoti aizraujoši vakar galvenā cīņa, jo, kā, kā jau zinām, Aleksam Pereiram ir divas uzvars jau pār čempionu kickboksā. Var diskutēt par uzvaram vienā brutāls nakauts priekš Pereiras. Pirmā cīņa var diskutēt, kurš, kurš pa punktiem kā uzvarēja. Bet, jā, daudz varbūt uzskata, ka nepelnīt per eiram tiek dota šī titula cīņa. Var piekrist un var nepiekrist, bet tomēr dzels ir jāsaka, kamēr tā ir karsta un per eira ir uzvarējis, kā jau minēju, divreiz ada saņu. Tas šis PRs un mārketings veido pats sevi. Un viņš tomēr pēdējā cīņā nākotēs Šons Strikland, kurš izlēma stāvēt ar Alex per eiru. Un lūk, viņš ir ieguvs titula cīņa. Tā kā, jā, UFC šobrīd vienkārši izmanto šo iespēju, jo... Jā, šos rūlīšus pirms šīs cīņas, viņi, kā jau minēja, veido pašu sevi, tā kā nav pārsteigums. Tad jau redzēsim, kā cīņa beigsies un kas tālāk būs Aleksam Pereiram. Arī dāma duels mums būs Esparza pret Jean Guéli, cīnīsies par titulu. Arī solās bļoti aizbraujoši cīņi būt, jo Esparza pēdējo cīņu mēs atceramies ar Rozunama Junas, kas bija milzīgi vilšanās, bet es domāju, ka cīņas sportisti, kā jau vienmēr būs ierdusies ļoti labi sagatavot. Un es domāju, mums būs arī uguņošana vakar otrā galvenajā cīņā. Un, protams, arī Dustins Porjē pret Michael Chandler, kas arī solās būt bangers, tā teikt, ļoti aizraujošs duels. Es ticamāk part arī lielu daļu mēs neredzēsim no šīs cīņas. Tā jau tas parasti notiek ar abiem šiem vīriem, lai arī Chandlers ir izteikts wrestlers. Frenkijs Edgars pret Chris Gutierrez un Dance Cookers pret Claudio Puelas, kas, manuprāt, ir ļoti aizraujošs cīņa Puelas. Ļoti labs var parādījis, kā džudžicu mākslinieks piebeidz cīkstojums ar visdažādākajām tehnikām. Un hukers, kā jau zinām, hukers vienmēr ierodas cīnīties. Un kā man paras patīk teikt, UFC piedomā, kas ir atklāšanas cīņa. Un tieši tādēļ arī šī, manuprāt, neliks vilties. Tā kā jā, piecos no rīta, agrā svētdienas rītā. Mēs būsim ar jums, protams, TV3 sportne, kur citur UFC jūs neredzēsiet. Tā kā tiekamies tieši šajā etarā.